Yeah, fortunately I was around in the seventies with my my uncles and my and my my mother and my aunties and we all had a poster of this woman in our in our houses mm-hmm. and, and and as a young man it was probably one of the first grown women that I ever felt an attraction to. I raised you well. You raised me well. <laughs> you know. You and, ain't been right <laughs> since. <laughs> I went off. I went astray. None of y'all. Not, I hear you in here. Yeah. Are you, yeah, you over there in the corner yeah. at seven years old going, Woo, wow, what was that? Yeah, yeah that, that, that definitely happened, man. And then I didn't realize until I got older how impactful this woman um, has been to the film industry. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also to just just to our community as a whole, just somebody to look up to, you know, just a, a, a image. Yes. You know, that we didn't constantly. We had superheroes in our home that were black women, but we didn't necessarily see the superheroes on the screen. You right. know, and when we saw them on the screen, they definitely weren't in leading roles. Mm-hmm. Right. And so when you would see this woman in a leading role, it made sense to us. Because it was like our auntie, our big sister. That's where I got it from. That's where you got it from? Now, you see all these coffees in here? Yes. All these foxy browns in here? Yeah. <laughs> okay, and all these horses in here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got it from my family. These are my family's from the Black West. Okay. That's how far all of us go back. The, the Black other... West. Talk about what's the... the... But, but first of all, Pam right. Greer hey! is here. Yes, yeah! yeah, the legend. Pam Greer is oh, here. Thank you. Woo! Legendary. Thank you okay. so much. The Black West. Yep, we're a part of building of America. The mm-hmm. Black Underground Railroad, people uh, homesteaded mm-hmm. and uh, had farms. And uh, like my great grandmother, Lucy mm-hmm. Davis, she had a hotel for the blacks and Chinese that worked on the railroad, all of Blazing Saddles. Mm-hmm. And I gave that information to Richard Pryor so he could give it and share it with Mel Brooks when they wrote it. Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles. That gonna be, awesome. And it's also going to be on brownsugar.com, Come showing on. all my movies, all pop black American Pop culture, film, music, Mm -hmm. clothing, Afro, Mm -hmm. our spirituality, Mm -hmm. our politics. So, um, and that's a that's a a black brown sugar dot com is a platform, and it's also an application you can download for your phone. Right, right, right. exactly. And so, my grandfather, Daddy Ray, Mm -hmm. is in my book, Foxy. Thank you guys for making Foxy my life in three acts, my autobiography, number twenty in the New York Times bestseller. Hello. Hello. You guys, that was okay. extraordinary um, because I, I basically talked about my Me Too movement as as a, a, a woman child. Mm-hmm. My Me Too was three times. Uh-huh. And my grandfather, Daddy Ray, who hopefully will be played by Idris Elba. Mm-hmm. Okay. Be a I good think it will be now that you put yeah. it out well, there. No, he, no, he and Jazzy Jeff and Benny Richburg, who was the writer of my screenplay, mm-hmm. um, he was the showrunner writer of Fresh Prince Martin and the Jamie Foxx show. He, he he optioned my book the day that he found it, saw it in a bookstore. And he was hanging out with his friend. They're all from Philly. They mm-hmm. grew up together, Benny and, and Jazzy and Will Smith. And, and Idris, Idris was hanging out with him, and he heard about it. He said, I got to be in the Pam Grimm movie. I got to be in it. I said, mm-hmm. okay, you it. You will play my <laughs> Daddy Ray, the first feminist in my life that taught all us girls how to hunt, fish, and shoot. Ooh, wow. So which you, is from the Black West. The Black West. They had homesteads. They raised uh, cattle. Uh-huh. My great-grandmother also was a sugar beet farmer. What, what years were this? Uh, this was this was the early 1900s, late 1800s. Okay. Mm-hmm, Lucy, and I have a picture of her on Twitter. Uh-huh. Of my great grandmother, and she was sassy. <laughs> you know, she was a Victorian. She had money, and she was so sassy. Uh-huh. But she taught my <laughs> grandfather how women were had a purpose and could be individual, and they could be independent. and And she wasn't trying to ever take the the job away from men. You know, she yeah. did it female style. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Men did theirs, women did theirs, and there was just equality. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, <laughs> it, it's been. Such an extraordinary moment that I have an audience to talk about where we were then because we had Mary Fields, the first black stagecoach driver yeah. in the West that I tried to get. I've been still working on getting the movie done with Glenn Turman and I just talked about how far we went back in our independence and equality. Mm-hmm. And women weren't berated for, you know, being uh, in the rural area, being uh, adventurous in, and handling guns and hunting and taking care of the homestead if the men were away until later on when they moved into the cities. When my mom was trying to cut the grass and take care of our house when our dad wasn't there, she was berated for doing that. Wow. And they said, oh, she's being exploitative. Just like when there were so many black uh, male 
action movies before me. Yeah. And when I did uh, Coffee, Foxy Brown, and Sheba, I had the first three picture deal in Hollywood. The the conservatives were saying, well, "Oh, well, you got to say that slow, <laughs> Pam Greer. Can't skip past that. You just you just ran over that. <laughs> yeah. You had the first three picture deal, deal. in Hollywood. In Hollywood. Uh, Coffee, wow. Foxy Brown, and Sheba. Wow. And then I did Friday Foster, the comic strip, which is going to be, a, they're bringing that, republishing it again, uh -huh. Foxy, uh, uh, um, Friday Foster. And so um, uh, I had the, the fortune to be able to bring my background to film. Uh -huh. And today when, you know, they think I'm a cougar and these young youngins are coming to take me out and stuff, uh -huh, you know. Uh -huh. And they say, well, you have guns, don't you? I said, yeah, I was giving my grandfather's guns. And, you know, Richard Pryor had guns. Freddie Prince had guns. Everybody had guns. We all have guns. Mm -hmm. And I said, but don't worry about my guns. Worry about my chainsaw. Up, oh, damn! Oh man, Pam Grier's oh. here. It's real. I can start it up and throw it at your ass. You know, so, you know, you gonna mess. Don't worry about that. Wow. So, Show me your ways. And so when um, I was doing Shaolin Shuffle, which was uh, designed by Call of Duty, uh -huh. Infinity Ward, Lee Ross, he developed this video game for me. The family can play it. Mm -hmm. Shaolin Shuffle, uh -huh. and I teach these uh, students how to kill and uh, these zombie rats uh -huh. in Harlem. And one of them was Jay Farrell, uh, the, the comedian. <laughs> He's brilliant. Oh, yeah. Oh my. I, so I'm I'm outside of the studio, and and Lisa's listen, listen, Pam, and I listen to Jay's voice, and all of a sudden I started shaking. I said, "That's that's Richard Pryor. That's my yeah. Richard." Yeah. I think. I found my Richard Pryor, and we've been looking, looking. You know, you got to start putting your cast together and mm -hmm. who's available and, mm -hmm. and get everybody. It's a it's an arduous process. And so I, I, I just got lost control, and I ran outside, and I called Benny Richburg. Mm -hmm. I said, Benny, I think I found my Richard Pryor. I was screaming <laughs> in the parking lot. They thought I was like, clear, clear. She's lost her mind. She's... And and so they met. <laughs> clear, clear. She, you know, you, know, you can defibrillate <laughs> That's just, that's just for, you know, when you've had an orgasm for seven hours, you okay. know, you're not going to survive it. So anyway. Um, <laughs> Are you speaking from experience, Pam? Yes, I, yes, I am. <laughs> that, that, you had an orgasm for seven hours? Who gave it to you? <laughs> Myself. <laughs> Tracy. That's how yeah, badassery yeah. I am. Yeah, live to tell a story. Uh, right. I'll get to that. That's when you get old. They, you know, they get longer. But anyway. Oh, I'm looking I'm just, forward. To yeah, I'm, I just want to let you know there's gonna be some happiness at the end of that rainbow. Thank as, you both. as you're crawling to the finish line, okay? You know, since we can't pick a date and just go kick it, we gotta crawl to the finish line. But anyway, I ain't crawling. So. <laughs> <laughs> you done made Sway blush. No, no. Sway don't know what Sway pink. No, I love it. Go ahead, Pam. Pam he is, is isn't he? I love that go color. That's we, yeah, we call it fuchsia. Fuchsia. Yeah, you done turned fuchsia. fuchsia. Back, back, back. Uh, oh, Poppy, I love you. Okay. So, anyway. <laughs> Pam Greer is my hero. Continue. Okay, go, go ahead. I want y'all to be heroes, okay? <laughs> so, uh, Jay Farrell, we met, we talked, he read the script, and he just cried. He embodied Richard so much. Because mm. people don't lo know a lot the spectrum of Richard's life. Mm -hmm. um, and if you watch the Showtime documentary, his widow, Lee, she said, um, Pam, you were the best influence for mm -hmm. Richard. We were getting into business. We were going to produce movies together. I was getting him cleaned up. He stopped cold turkey. And he was basically, you know, he had a horse that was given to him. His horse was attacked by the dogs. We didn't have a horse trailer. Take it to the vet. I put that horse in the backseat of my four-door yellow, banana yellow Jaguar and took it to the vet. Oh, Richard said, you funny. <laughs> I made him laugh when I was taking his horse in the back, head out to one side of the door, uh -huh. tail out the other. We driving down the 405, bouncing the pipes came off. The we were, you know, fish. <laughs> I was gonna save a life. Yeah, that's been my purpose all my life is to save a life. We saved his horse. I saved Richard, uh -huh. you know, for a while, and I realized that he had some issues. And I said, you know what? Um, he said, you, baby, you, you don't want to live with me. Why you won't you live with me? Everybody wants to move in with me. I said, no, I'm good. I, I want to see who you are. I'll check you out. He says, you got a man back home. Are you seeing somebody else? I said, I do have a man. And it like I thought oh, I'd killed him. I said, it's my grandfather, Daddy Ray. Oh, okay. He said, I want to meet him. I said, okay. So we flew in, met Daddy Ray. And it was that he started tearing up because this was the grandfather he always wanted mm. to take him fishing. 
mm-hmm. and show him how to be a man and do things. You you have options to choose from that will move you forward. Mm-hmm. Don't take the choices that keep you going laterally. And so he, being a pioneer man from the country, homestead, take care of your family, take care of your, he knew don't leave your land because someone will take it. So he taught me all those things. I was so grateful to bring it to film and bring it to Richard. Richard now said, now I know what you're talking about when you gave me that information for Grace, Grace Lightning, which yeah. made him uh-huh. a star writer, a mainstream writer. Uh-huh. When we brought our narrative, which we're bringing now even more so uh-huh. because we're not afraid. And with brownsugar.com, after the premiere and the red carpet is over, mm-hmm. there's no way for you to continue your brand sustainability yeah until black history month Mm -hmm. maybe you might see a few movies or something like that but you have to find a way if we want more black panthers if we want more content more movies made for us straight out of compton more we have to know that there is an audience that will support it Mm -hmm. and that's why you support your brand and that's why all the movies, not just movies that were done in the 70s, but 80s and 90s, Sidney Poitier and uh-huh. all of their kids, um, Richard Pryor, his concerts uh-huh. to everybody. And then in the movie, uh-huh. I'm hoping to to get Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool, uh-huh. to play. We, we know Ryan. We know Ryan. Yeah, he comes to, here a lot. To play <laughs> John G- yeah, to play John Gaines, my uh-huh. fairy gay mother, who's the agent that had me, Tamara Dobson, Cleopatra Jones, Richard Roundtree, and Isaac Hayes. He was taking a building our brand of success, finding our audiences, what they like, music, comedy, style, especially comedy, mm-hmm. laughter. And and with um, with that, he said, I'm taking you to mainstream as well. And Tamara and I were about to embark on, after she finished Cleopatra Jones 2, mm-hmm. and me finished my, my three, four movies, we were starting a buddy pick. Mm-hmm. Buddy picture franchise uh-huh. of black women in comedy. I'm grassroots. She's sophisticated, and we getting in each other's way, but we're going to solve the problem. Mm-hmm. And Tamara, I taught her how to handle guns and motorcycles, and she taught me makeup. Wow. And it pissed Kareem off because he came over one day, and Tamara had done my makeup. Okay, but, but stop. But hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Okay, Pam, stop. Okay, I know, so, so okay. Let me, let me, hold on. Let me, let, me, let me jump in real quick. Even with Richard Pryor. Uh, and you mentioned Freddie Prince. We're gonna find out Freddie Prince okay. and get that Latin okay. market. Uh, and then now you now you mentioning Kareem. These are all people you've dated too. As I well. dated. Um, I would have become a Muslim if if Kareem had given me enough time. Mm-hmm. But then when when I realized I was gonna be so oppressed and I may not get that education and he may back off on the offer, I said I love me more and I can't make you that happy. Wow. So be be my friend and we are still friends to this day. What, was he nice? A nice person, Kareem? Yeah, we we love jazz and mm-hmm. we love sports, um, and he was. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> had the laugh. <laughs> yeah, she it's, had a it's girl stuff. I can't talk to you about yeah. that right now. Yeah. Oh, what? I can't oh. talk to you about that. Oh, no. It's girl stuff. Look mm-hmm. at look at everybody. Say, please, Pam. Please, Auntie Pam. Please tell us no. Um, <laughs> and and he we had um, a lot of. We're both inquisitive. Mm-hmm. We love curiosity, reading jazz music, and and I just I just didn't find Islam was for me because it's not monolithic. Mm-hmm. It's conservative, moderate, fundamental, and liberal. And I kept asking him, "What are we gonna be?" And he couldn't tell me. He says, "You asked too many questions." <laughs> oh. What? what? Excuse <laughs> me. That That's torture. why you like me. Yeah. That's why yeah. you love me. I ask questions. What are we going to be if I'm giving up my life to become your wife and true and live under your star and fame of, of basketball? Who will I be? Mm-hmm. You know, what will happen? And subsequently, there was some tragedy yeah. with his with his teacher at the house in Washington, D.C., and I could have been in that. Mm-hmm. So that was my uh, that saved me. My purpose is <laughs> step back. And then with Freddie Prince, pretty much the same thing. Um, but, but, but he helped me, Freddie. Freddie helped you. He, he, I used to watch him on um, Chico, Chico and the Man. Man. Chico as a kid, and 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 he ended up committing suicide. Yes, he did. Okay. He called me three days before he killed himself. And uh, Freddie, when I was doing hosting the the um, Image Awards the mm-hmm. last year before I went to television, I made him my date, and he had on a tuxedo. There's a picture on my Twitter site of he and I, and he was so handsome. He loved Groucho Marx and vaudeville, and he was a classic, classically trained dancer. Mm-hmm. So when he came over, and he was fixing my hair, and he brought me this fur, fox fur, and I started crying because I said, "You kill all these animals." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, I. I was, and so I put on the 
outfit and Earth, Wind, and Fire was playing. Now, you know they're from mm. Denver. Mm-hmm. Philip, Andrew, Wilford, and Larry Dunn. They were in my gospel group. And so I was playing Earth, Wind, and Fire, and we started f- doing Fred and Ginger. Mm-hmm. So he started tap dancing and held his hand out, and I started doing it. It would be like Beyonce and Jay-Z doing Fred and Ginger, oh, you know, oh, around like the room. It's going to yeah. be a great scene yeah. in the movie. That's going to be in the movie. And he said, he, he, he said, Pam, you got to do Broadway. you got to do the boards. You got you have so much potential. And he, he gave me that. Uh-huh. He shared mm. that, and he wasn't afraid of me doing that. We were because that's what really nice when, when your partner, your man says, "Hey, I ain't afraid, baby. You being a star, go mm-hmm. ahead and make more money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dude, I, like I support that. you. Yeah. You know, you support each other. You I'm, find each other's gems in uh-huh. one another. I'm that kind of man, just to let yeah, you know. Yeah, I can see that. I can see I, that. I can see okay. that. You are not, <laughs> there's no fear here. No. And then with Richard, it was pretty much, <laughs> it was pretty much the same. Uh-huh. Uh, but I knew he was gonna fall. And I said, Richard, you know, I'm I'm not a a crutch. I I can be when you need it, but then now it's become so necessary every day. I when when are you gonna help me? Because we had started these plans. You have to go to these meetings at Columbia. They're trying to give you a picture deal, mm-hmm. and and everybody would love to have what you have. And when I came home from doing drum for Dino De Laurentiis, mm-hmm. and I had done two movies for him. I'd done one, The Arena, which you will see. Mm-hmm. That's gonna will, be on. That's gonna be on. It's on brownsugar.com, dot com. and you will see all of me. Oh, you'll be naked. I, I, yes, I play a, a, a bush princess from Africa. Okay, so we'll see your bush. Hey, hey, hello. And I didn't <laughs> shave either. Hello. Hey, watch out. Oh, okay, what's hey. up, Graham? You dated Will Chamberlain too? No, I never dated Will. You never no. dated Will. Okay. I was too country and I wasn't as sophisticated. He okay. he never even tried to ask me out or Jim Brown or anything. They just said, "Oh, look at that little country girl." <laughs> okay. Pat me on my afro, on my uh-huh. head and stuff. But they didn't know that I was, you know, carrying and I drove into, <laughs> you know, uh, LA in my family's hunting jeep. So, they didn't they, didn't they knew not the to mess. Five. They they knew, "No, she's something. She's and, weird." And they thought I was Rosie Greer's um, uh, niece or uh-huh. daughter or something like that, oh, and yeah. so the first week I, I came to California, Rosie Greer played. Didn't he play football at one point? He played, yeah, yeah for, for the football. L.A. Rams. For the L.A. Rams, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, but we're, we weren't related. You we were just by mm. maybe by plantation name or something like that. Okay, okay. But, um, the I ca- name. Yeah, Greer. It's it's <laughs> Irish Scottish. I, I did that ancestry DNA, and I find out who my relatives are. You know, like I wanted to check it out to see what other illness, you know, things that were yeah. made up. So um, when I got into town, I basically uh, I needed money for school. Mm-hmm. I said, "Oh my God, this this LA is so expensive. It's so fairyland to me. I just never experienced anything like that." So uh, he said, uh, "I'm gonna send you over to my friend Bobby Womack. He's doing an album. Maybe you can do some back singing for Womack. Womack. Yeah. So <laughs> I did think I did. You're lonely now. Woo! Yes, yes, baby. What? Yeah, I can understand Wait it. until tonight, girl. Oh my goodness, oh. you gave me the chills. So anyway. Um, <laughs> I sang on his I Can Understand It, your two albums. Yes. Back then. And then he said, I got a friend that needs some, you know, uh, some more background singers. Maybe you go there tomorrow. And he says, his name is Sylvester Stewart. And I said, Sylvester. okay, Sylvester Stewart. So <laughs> I get in my Jeep and I drive over to CBS and I'm going to get double scale. And uh, I go <laughs> in, I go and then my raggedy Jeep has is, has no roof, no windows, no doors on it. And the sheriff stopped me and said, is that dang legal? And I said, I got plates on it. It's from Colorado. Where's Colorado? <laughs> Uh, if you look, you know, kind of <laughs> east, you might find it. But I didn't want to get, you know, shot. Yeah, yeah. Being Even smart, back, but, smart. But ass. back then, you had that fear too, or that 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 was a possibility. That was a possibility. Student, what, what student year, unrest. What year, what, what year are we student talking? Student unrest. We're talking seventy. And student so, unrest. Remember the Duke. Remember some of the Kent State. Mm-hmm, all that mess. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. And Vietnam War. Mm-hmm. We had riots. We we had Black Panthers. Okay. Soon Diata, and we had several other underground r- groups that were fighting for equality. So when you see Black. Black lives matter. So wait, 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 wait. Okay. Let me, let me, let me tell okay, you about okay, this. Okay, okay. You're no, scream. you hear all day. I want Come you on. to scream. Okay. <laughs> so I go up into CVS and the and the the uh, a manager meets me at the recording session. So he says, "Oh, you." I sign up. He says, "Are you are you're in the union?" No, I'm a student. And it's okay. You're Taff Hartley. You're gonna make you know three hundred dollars an hour. And I'm going. What? <laughs> what? Okay, that's tuition. I'm like excited. I'm gonna sing my ass off tonight. Uh-huh. You know, I'm gonna sing gospel. I'm gonna play the organ, Hammond B3. What you want? And so um, he says, "Have you these ladies over here? Have you worked with them before?" And I said, "No." And he said, "That's Wonder Love. That's the Wonder Love, Whoa. Steve. That's Denise, mm-hmm. um, 
Denise Williams, Lanny Groves, Sarita Wright, uh, all, and um, it was four of them. Denise and, Williams. Yeah, wow. Nisi. Yeah. Nisi. Wow. Sarita Wright. Minnie Ripperton. Minnie All Ripperton. of them were sitting oh, there. That's when I met Minnie. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, my God. So I, sold, I sold them records at the record store, one of my five jobs. And so he says, okay, let me take you back in to meet Sylvester. And I walk down the hallway to the window, and there is this big fro, a bass guitarist, all chamois and fringe, and it's Sly of the Family Stone. Wow. I was like my second day off the turnip truck. I am singing background, and over here in the corner is Buddy Mouse on drums. And I'm a drummer as well. Uh And I was like, oh, my goodness. All these people in one room. In one room. And we're we're called in to sing. Now, he's so successful that they have the tape going. He is composing songs while the tape is going. Uh He could do that all day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he's so successful. And I'm going, oh, my gosh. Usually you write it in your studio and you compone it. And then you bring it in the studio and you put it together and mix it. He's just standing. The tape is just going all day. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. So he calls us in to do some harmony. I'm in just heaven, raptured, like, oh, singing with it. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, and he <laughs> and Sly has his funk. He is like, you know, seriously funk. Rip. Uh, Where are those tapes? Where uh-huh. are those tapes? You and Buddy Miles jamming, you know, you know, with Buddy. Yeah, yeah. Well, my mind is going mm-hmm. through so mm-hmm. many changes. So Buddy was also um, Jimi Hendrix, New Revolution drummer when he left his, his English wow. band to become Jimi Hendrix. So we're sitting there. It's like 3 a.m. in the morning. So they they said, Pam, you, we, we, we're going to rest a minute. I've got some friends coming in. I said, okay, well, just sit out here and drink coffee. And the elevator door opens, and there's three men in this elevator in the light. And, like, there's this zombie movement happening all over the building. Uh And out walk these three men. And in the center is a dark shadow with a black hat. And I can hear, you know, ching, 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 ching with each step. Uh And he's got silver around his hat. And then there's two white dudes on the side of him with blonde hair. And they're walking down the hallway. And as they pass me, it's Jimi Hendrix. Wow. And people coming out the hallways up just like <sighs> Jimi Hendrix and Sly Stone all in the same oh, night. Damn. And they walk in and they say, hey, man, they start hugging each other and they're doing, you know, like, hey, man, I'm glad you can make it, man. We're going to put on, pick up something. We're going to just jam tonight. And I'm like, oh, my. I said, can I play something? Can I, <laughs> can I come in here? And they looked at me up and down saying, she country. <laughs> She country. She here from Colorado. She's a background singer, and they're laughing. Well, what can, I can play organ, bass for my foot. I can sing. I can, you know. I said so. They started, and there was this funky riffs that were like off, like to try, like today. I mean, seriously, funk riff. Where are those tapes? The, the, the non-existent. Oh my, I don't know. Either Sly's attorney might have them or his people. But let me tell you, if they release it today. It's gems. Do the roof. Pam and Greer. so that was my first week. And coming to LA. <laughs> first week in LA. Damn, wow. man. That's a movie in itself. It's, it's, it's gonna be in it's gonna be in the movie. It's gonna be in the it's movie. It's gonna be in the movie. Wow. Man, Pam Greer is here. Brownsugar.com, man. You can find all sorts of movies from the Mac that's gonna be in there. Yep. Right? That's um, crazy. Um, Car wash. Superfly, Shaft, man, yeah. Dingo. You gotta watch man Dingo. Everything. Was that George uh, Foreman and Mandinka? Who was in? No, 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 Kenny. Kenny, Kenny, uh, Fork. Kenny, um, Kenny Norton. Kenny Norton. Norton. Yeah, Norton. Kenny Norton. I said yeah. George Foreman. <laughs> Kenny Norton was in <laughs> Cleopatra uh, Jones, Jones was in all it. her movies. Which her way kids. is up? Yeah. Oh my Uptown God. Saturday Uptown Saturday night. That's in there. All Uptown. right, five on the black hand side. Yes. Uh, <laughs> y'all gonna show Bill Cosby? Um, oh. I, I don't think he's in there. He I don't think Uptown we Uptown Saturday night. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, he was. Yes, yeah, yeah, he was with yeah, yeah. Sydney. He, yeah, he's yeah, in he it. Was. Everybody who is in it is going to be in it. And we have C- Cicely Tyson, James Earl Jones. Yeah. And yeah. my mom couldn't afford to go to the movies. Let me tell you, I've been playing Brown Sugar for her and her and her peers. And to see the joy on her face, because she couldn't afford to go to movies. Mm-hmm. Many of our, our your grandmas, your mom uh-huh, could not uh-huh. go. Yeah. They, that money went to raising us. And so to see her today, play that again. Uh-huh. Put that on stop. I gave her a DVR. A little, why did I do that? Yo, because we can, it, we huh? got to. See, but it brings her joy. She's going on ninety. Yeah, and she deserves brown sugar. And so I got it and play music. And the and she says, look at the 
here. Look at the film. Look at the plan. I was going down <laughs> one of your streets and the designer had, I think it was uh, not Gucci, but um, one of your very fabulous, expensive Valentino. They had plaid. I said, that's right out of the 70s. Uh -huh. They're exactly plaid. The whole style, everything. The whole thing is yeah. like, that's like what you're we fashion to... forward right now. With the, what you're wearing right now, you're fashion forward. You're ahead of the trend. As always. Uh, Pam Greer, oh. ladies and gentlemen. I want her to play Beyonce, mother. When Beyonce have a movie, like the story of her life, oh, you would make a that. great hey, Tina Knowles. Um, yeah. like, like, let beautiful. me tell you, Tracy Morgan called for me to play his mom in his series, and I was shooting with Diane Keaton. Uh -huh. And then uh, Tiffany Haddish called me to play her mom in a movie with Melissa. I was shooting my pilot for Fox Bless This Mess. Uh -huh. uh, and I was like, ah! These, you know, I said, right. hang on, I'll be there. You'll be there. I'll be your mama. When Beyonce okay. called, you better not be sure. Oh, no, okay. no, 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 no. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I went after Beyonce when I uh, optioned uh, uh, Not a Day Goes By and she wasn't available to play that character, main mm. character. Okay. You know, yeah. so I was, uh, I'm still developing in that, you know, as a, as a producer, writer, director. Can I ask you uh, two things real quick? Because I know you got to go. You got another interview. Uh, in Too Deep. Yes, with Omar Epps. In, in LL Toronto. Cool J. That that's one of my Ooh, favorite movies of isn't all that cool? time. I, I we got along so great. He was so yeah. much fun. We were uh, in Toronto and it was like below nine or something uh -huh. like that. And they were crying and I was out there in flip flops and going, I'm from Colorado. Uh -huh. I'm from Colorado. <laughs> 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 and then L L, that was like to me, LL's at that time to the strongest role yeah. he played when mm -hmm. he played God. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. that was uh, such mm -hmm. an excellent But you role. had a good director that said Push it. Go beyond that. Uh -huh. Go one more time. Let me see it. And when you have a confidence of director, like a music director, mm -hmm. that says, no, hit that note. Okay, go off that note. Oh, behind the beat or ahead of the beat. Mm. When you have that someone who knows the feeling of your work and develops you, because he had never been that type of actor yeah. until you have someone to say, Okay, mm -hmm. let me take you to the side. I want you to do a little bit of that, a little bit of that. Nobody's going to know what you do, so that energy will hit them and surprise them, and they'll send something back to you. Yeah. And yeah. it was so great to do that. Yeah. And it uh, just takes a director, that's all. Pam Greer. Uh, and then finally, with Freddie Prince Jr., you, you talk about um, the state of mind he was in at that time. Uh, We've we seen a lot today, a lot of folks are identifying mental health issues. Yes. Back then, it's obvious that there were a lot of mental health issues going on, but was it misdiagnosed? Did we not know what it was in the 70s or 80s? Or? Well, um, you know, we didn't talk about it because okay. in our community, you know, if you're crazy, you know, it was juju. We, we embraced it, but mm -hmm. we didn't talk about it because we didn't know okay. all the different types of bipolar and, and depression mm -hmm. and, and issues. Um, we were talking about... Um, and a shame, made it so shameful. Uh -huh. We were really judgmental in a negative way yeah. in many ways. We've yeah. come out of that. We've grown up. Uh -huh. And so his depression was based on, Mommy, I don't have any money. Mommy, can you bring me $200? Boy, you just you got a, a series. What, uh -huh. what, what's up? You know, he says, Mommy, you know, I, I've got my gun here. I'm really depressed. I don't know where my money is. People taking my money. I, that woman took my house. Da, 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 da. I'm like, what happened? This is not who you were when I when we broke up. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. and this is not what you were telling we were going to be doing. And I said, he says, I, I, these people are so fast. They were ahead of me. I didn't know what hit me. Well, you know, if if you're going to ride in the fast lane, yeah, you got to have a fast car and know uh -huh. where the brakes are. Uh -huh. Hmm. Uh -huh. Okay? And I saw that. And I just said, no, I better, I'll better. i be in the middle lane, you know, with a horse in the backseat of the car. With the other track. You know, some yeah. realism. I'm yeah. from a realism because I could be out the forest and see the trees of success. And that that's what attracted me. But he couldn't live by it because they were fast, slick head, Porsche driver, Gucci loafer, no mm -hmm. socks, you know, military, saying, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. And he signed his life away and realized it was too late. So that's why he called three days before Prior he to took that. his life, asking me to come over. And when I knew, you got a gun, yeah. Freddie, you are tired, you are hungry, have a find a friend, take that gun away from you, get you bathed, get you some food and relax, and then maybe I'll come over. Do you think Richard Pryor would have mental health issues? Was that a reason for all the, uh, the I, I, Anything I would say would be speculation. No, yeah. I yeah. don't think he was addicted because he was able to get off everything okay. with me for nine months. Ooh. Cold okay. turkey. Right. So that was some strength. But you think you have an addictive personality when you're around certain people that say, hey, man, come on, uh, buddy up. Yeah. 
two fingers, Uncle Jack, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know you're not supposed to be drinking because it'll make you forget everything. The day he was supposed to go and, and sign a Columbia picture deal was the day that morning we put out his suit and his tie. He was excited. He got his shave. He was ready to go walk in there and, and be the new, you know, new Richard Pryor with a deal and hire all these people. I come home. He's sitting in the kitchen with his friends from Peoria in his bathrobe. He canceled the meeting because these homies were so strong, so powerful. Come on, man. You don't need that meeting. We came to see you. So they're sitting in the kitchen, and I'm going, you didn't go to the meeting? Did you go to the meeting? No, nah, man, my, my, my friends came in from Peoria. I said, did they bring a bottle of something this time? They looked at me. I'm being sarcastic. Uh -huh. You bring food to somebody's house. They never did. And I said, I bring this up. I know you pay for them and you take care of them, but when are they going to take care of you? Don't tell me not to say anything. I'm your partner. And I saw that he'd fallen off the wagon. A lot of stuff was on the table. And I just said, this could be it. Because the producer called me and said, is Richard coming? I said, yep, he's coming. I promise he's going to be there. We put the suit out. He's going to make the deal with you. Da, da, da. He's not going to stand you up. And he did it. Uh -huh. So he did that to me as well. Uh -huh. So you break that with me one time, we're done. Pain. I'm like a horse. I'm like an animal. You abuse me one time, it's over. That's it. You I remember kick that. You. Yeah. Every time. Or, or, or turn around and poop on you. Something. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> you're looking like, Dude. whoa. And that's five pounds. Okay. Anyway. Um, so it, it broke oh, my heart to see that because Freddie it didn't have anyone to talk to. Right. And he didn't have peers. And he, and he was alone and by himself. And next thing I know, I get the call saying, you know, Freddie just took his life. Uh -huh. And I remember leaving this guest house, walking down the street to the hotel, just falling to the ground, watching the police and stuff. And I'm like, he died in that hotel alone. He reached out to me, but he had a gun. Uh -huh. And I love myself more. And I said, I'm not going there and have him shoot me because I take care of my family. I'm putting a, paying a lot of mortgages, putting people through college. Yeah. I don't ask for nothing back. I've been given a purpose and I can't have him take my life. Cause I wasn't taught that. Mm. Pam Gree, I want to thank that's you. Why you gotta come, be that's important. why you got to come back up. Brown Sugar is a new platform. Wow. Go on it. Wow. I wanted to show you something, cause I got the app right here. Yes. I, I've had the app downloaded for quite some time. Yeah. Three dollars and ninety nine cents a month. Yeah. Come so on. yeah, I've been on the app for a long that's time. Dope. I've been up on this for a while. Yeah. So Ooh, great. Uh, thank yeah, you. man, this is amazing. Thank you. Go check it and out. You, and, the, and kids and family be so inspired to yeah. get out there with a camera or their phone. Look at that. Yeah, I can't get right out there and make a movie. Little Yinka doing it. Make um, a movie. Yeah. Uh, Pam, thank you for coming by. We love you. Come love back. You. I come love back. you all. Thank you. All right, please I will. Come we'll back. save my spot for me, okay? okay? That's yeah. your spot save my right there. Spot.